It's time to down your unders. Down your unders. Review and dissection of content from some of the sharpest minds in the game. Hosted by Adam Camilleri. Art of War. Down Under. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this episode 60 of the Art of War Dental Podcast. My name at Nauseam is Adam Camilleri. Uh, I am joined by the podcasting producing paragon, FLGN patriarch, and father Ooh. of a single child, Val Heffelfinger. Hello. One. Good, my man. I'm also joined by the Sultan of Stats, the actual Night King of 40k, because he lives in the land of Neverwinter, but he will not die in so lame a fashion. Peter Le Falcon Calissimo. Hello, mate. Hello, hello. How you doing? It's pretty think, good. Pretty good. What's up, Val? I think like uh, like stabbed in the back by like a ninja 13 year old girl is probably the way Pete goes. It's true. Um, and it will be my daughter. <laughs> she has almost killed me multiple times. And she just loves shanks. She's just got preoccupation. Just, she, yeah, she's Loves always jumping off a she can't, <laughs> she can't off the top s- rope. <laughs> takes that beat. Yeah. She can't see a twig twig without sharpening it. Um all right, gentlemen. Where he, so every now and then, every couple of weeks, every couple of months, I like to just get my mates on and just talk some crap about how how the game is, how we're seeing the competitive environment, what we thoughts are of the addition of the books of the codexes, trying to take a cop down approach, and just talk some stuff. Like if we end up talking about the Matrix trailer, we're gonna go there. If we oh, want to talk man. Like, we want to talk how silly the world is. Well, maybe not so much political stuff, but if we want to talk how crazy things are in the world, we're going to talk about that too. Whether, like, and, you know, no topic is, is taboo, except for probably polit- politics and religion. Um, but in part two of this, we've got a bunch <clears throat> of listener questions, got a bunch of topics that have been put to us by the patrons and the subs, and they're going to just going to tr- take a trapeze. Trapeze, whatever. I get that word wrong last time with Val. That's it. That's it. I knew he was going to correct me. That's why I chucked it in. Course, We're going to go for a trapeze. Trapeze. <laughs> going to trapeze. A tight, a, a small, small rope walk over a dangerous, dangerous drop um, through the list of questions. Rope? Yeah, a, a trapeze artist. It's a tight rope artist. Is that not the name? Tight no. rope. Yes. They're, they're, yeah. they're two different things. But you, well, you did, one of you them... did describe it as a small rope artist. Yeah. Did, it's did, it's yeah. okay. Yeah. It's all right. This is why it's I have okay. these guys on because they keep me honest. It's, it's, it's fair. But this is a two-part podcast. If you want the second part of this, please go over to Patreon and search Art of War Down Under. Or go over to the amazing 40, the Art of War 40k.com and you can find and purchase this podcast in addition to the other amazing Art of War podcast for a single bulk, bulk double, 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 triple bundle, whatever it is. Uh, one mm. click, get all the goodness. Uh, please do that if you are all interested. Jumping into the state of Pretty things. sure I do general. that. You do that? I do you do are. that. Yeah, well, you are a patron of, of mine, which I, mm-hmm. I, I like. I don't, know, I don't know if Pete is. He might be too salty. I'm. I don't know. I don't even know. I I pay a lot of people money, and I really <laughs> like. I I've lost stopped. track a long time ago. <laughs> I've stopped asking why. Uh, <laughs> but gentlemen, tell us a little bit about some of the things you guys do. People don't know who you are for whatever reasons. Maybe unfamiliar. Uh, what are some things you guys do? If you want to plug anything, please feel free. Go for it, Val. Do it. All do right. Thing. Well, do thing. Uh, if if you like Peter and I, and you'll have a few minutes now to find out, uh, we uh, we we have a mothballed show called Forty K Stats Center, uh, and then uh, but we do appear weekly uh, on the Honest War Gamer uh, as part of the Forty K Adjacent Show, and then I uh, have my fingers in a bunch of pies, which sounds kind of gross, but nonetheless, uh, I help run um, the various shows on the Frontline Gaming Network, including one that uh, the lovely host of this show takes part in uh the thursday show literally finished recording it 40 minutes ago so <laughs> there we go uh and pete what's a little what's your high, what's your side hustle um my i guess my side hustle is um 40kstats.com it's a website that i've been uh handling now for uh, a little over three years um i track every uh gt and major game that takes place um look at statistic and you know kind of provide everybody with the statistics uh, for the meta worldwide, like what's going on in the world of 40K as we as it stands. Um, and that's really about it. So every week um, I sit down, usually on a Monday, and I just start hammering down you know, 12 or 16 hours worth of, uh, of statistics as I go player by player and list by list and 
and see what actually happened in the world of 40k. Big old yikes, because uh, you're one of the hardest working men in our scene, and uh, I very much appreciate your work. I was on I was on your website two days ago, because I had a crazy special snowflake idea for a faction, and I needed to check that I was a special snowflake. Turns out I was not a special snowflake, and <laughs> that list had been done by quite a few other people. So yeah. there we are. Which list very is happy that? that? Not going to tell you. No, 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 you're not going to tell me. No, no, no. I was on, uh, I was so on a couple of days. Patrons. I was on a couple of days before that looking at night lists just because I wanted some inspiration. I was mm-hmm. looking at the Freeblade Lance and I wanted to know what people did as their um, burdens and, and um, quests, yeah. whatever the craps it are. Uh, and so that was interesting to see what people's configurations were. And that's, it's a great resource for people out there. I heartily suggest everybody, if you want to just get and keep your finger on the pulse of your faction or the stuff that's doing well um, you know, worldwide for whatever factions you're interested in, 40K Stats is an incredible resource for a bunch of other things on top of what I just said as well. But to get into why we're here, gentlemen, we're going to talk some crap. We're going to talk about whatever we feel like talking about. But I set this first one, and I'm just going to throw it over to Pete. Where are we at with Ninth Edition? Where do you think Ninth Edition is sitting right now? Is it is it good, bad, indifferent, ugly? I don't think it's ugly. I don't think I don't I don't want to be that extreme. Um, like I think the state of the meta is bad. I think that we're at a point in the game where, at least on the like the very competitive side, a lot of it has been solved. Um, and a lot of the reason why that has been solved is the the top two, three ish factions are just so much better than everybody else that mm. the game. I talked about this a lot at the beginning of ninth of something I was afraid might happen, and you and I mentioned uh, chatted about it a little pre show. This concept of like a parking lot game where the game becomes less and less interactive. Yeah. Um, and I think we're we're starting to see that you you either playing Drukari and Admech, which um, Drukari in particular now after the Admech nerf are head and shoulders above everybody else um or you're playing um like lists that just do their best to score points with the least amount of interactivity mm, um, exactly right. and i think i think that's the case for a lot of factions uh, like poor necrons the the lists that are doing well for necrons if you talk to like dick vanderharst um or, or like or anybody else that's you know had any kind of success like they're just like yeah my list essentially scores points and hopes not to die before the end of the game I don't yeah. try. To, I don't try to kill anything. I just stand places, and mm. um, you're seeing that kind of more and I mean, more. That even... sounds fluffy to me. That sounds like a good <laughs> narrative guy. And so, so I think that that's that's an issue. I think there are some some bright spots. I think the last few codexes have been really good in terms of like how they should be for the game. I thought Sisters was fantastic. Um, I thought uh, I think Thousand Suns and Grey Knights are really fun codexes to play mm. uh orcs as well um it's just that that ad mech and that drukari uh kind of raised by those armies of renown and the like cult of strife um are just too much and because of that we're kind of reaching the stagnation point where we kind of need either a chain we look we need a bunch of changes we need some mission adjustments some secondary adjustments and more importantly we need somebody to take a stec- second stab at, at those two armies and say like let's let's tone them down a little bit further so oh so you don't you don't you think they're actually at the space marine eighth edition space marine codex um, where they actually just need a rewrite in order to to be compliant with the rest of the codexes they're actually just i don't know if they need a rewrite i think the metrics they're built yeah i think drukari just someone needs to say let's let's stop using cult of strife for a while i bet Mm -hmm. that would be like a perfect fix for that army um and admech just need another tweak down not a huge one but like i'm not saying rewrite everything like whoa Mm -hmm. whoa that'd be crazy but like I, you also got to think of all these people that have been buying miniatures. I don't want to hurt their feelings too, too much. But so they, it, something needs to be it's done. it's interesting we say that we got to this point. I believe we got to a similar point in Eighth Edition with the state of things. And what was uh, what do you think was different there? So we had the Craft World book come out, which mm-hmm. when com- in combination with Yunari made for a toxic meta. It made for a very toxic meta, especially for singles. So teams wasn't so bad. Um, and a similar thing happened off the back of them because that went straight into the Castellan meta. We had these. They weren't kind of factions that were. Well, Yunari was a faction, but it was kind of a conglomerate of different factions that was making these things possible, underpinning, you know, all of them together. Sometimes it was Yunari had primarily was craft world, but it did have sometimes had Drakari elements, sometimes had Harlequin elements in there. Um, but you had this kind of conglomerate of things coming together. Now we have single codex factions. Um Thing with possible supplements on top that are just so above and away different. What was different about Eighth Edition that made that not as punitive? Because I feel like this, a similar thing happened. We had we had a state of the game almost at around about the same time time frame into an edition. We're about what eighteen months into into ninth, or it's about it's only about a 14, 15 months, I think. Mm-hmm. Is that about fair? Yeah. And I feel like I feel like this time eighth edition we had a similar 
paradigm going on. We had a similar issue. What was what what made that not as bad? I think personally, and, and Val, I'll let you talk in a second. I think the big thing was like it wasn't an entire codex that was a, an issue, which I think is what we're seeing right now. I think the Drukarian Adma codexes are just overall so much stronger. Um, mm. It's harder to build into them like it was for, say, the Castellan, um, which was one particular unit that was like, undercosted and and just had a, like a litany yeah. of stratagems, right? So if you could build into a Castellan and everybody was taking it, like you were pretty solid to go. And we kind of saw this near the end of the Drukari menace when they were still hitting that 70% win rate. Like t- upper tier players were like, okay, well, I'm just going to play um, Dreadnought Spam. And as long as I I have boards that are at least semi-conducive to those, I'll, I'll win the game by making a list that kills Raiders real good. Mm. Um, and, but then Admet came out and like they were just as good as Drukari, uh, maybe even better, and they wrecked Dreadnoughts. So, mm. like, your one answer was gone. Yeah, so. exactly right. Sorry, Val, what were we going to say? I was going to say, uh, and this is something I've been saying, and I don't know how accurate it still is, but it's probably still pretty accurate, because we're more than a year, much more than a year now, uh, removed from the um, you know release of Ninth Edition, and I don't think we're anywhere close to all of the books being out. Um, in in eighth edition, one year into the game, we were short uh, Gene Stealer Cult, Orcs, Orcs, Sisters yeah. of Battle, Sisters. <clears throat> that was it. Like they 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 got all literally. They had they released basically two two games uh, because there was Index Forty K. Yeah, the mm-hmm. indexes, and then we went into the the codexes. Although, and I don't know how many people remember just how upset everyone was about the uh, imbalance between index and codex. Uh, armies uh say in the fall of, of whatever that would have been 2017 or so um that was a real big talking point there's the fact you know imperial guard were the menace you know you could mm. you could spam units like there are all these like really big abusable loopholes in the rule set and there was a very big disparity in power level between the codex armies and the index armies mm-hmm. um what i think uh, the difference between that and where we are today is you know basically the eighth edition armies are are your equivalent to index. Hmm. Um, they haven't been meeting nearly that pace for reasons that are probably beyond their control, but also more recently maybe a bit more in their control. Who knows what's going on on the back end? Um, and then uh, there is a legitimate situation where they just aren't as responsive, um, and and yeah. that is that mm-hmm. is uh, really. Disheartening, I think, for for anyone. I think some of the some of the most exciting things about Eighth Edition was just how on the ball they were. Mm. Um, they were too on the, the ball beginning. at one point, right? Yeah, like, there was <laughs> yeah. a point where people yeah. got mad that they were putting out facts like every two days. Um, not every. I loved it, but I mean, I could understand it. And then, uh, but they they've seemed to turn the hose right off. Like they're we're getting a trickle. Someone's standing on it somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and, well, and and honestly, I have no insight as to why that would be or what what the what the rationale is for it. But anyone who has a long memory of this game, um, I, I think, would immediately have a sinking feeling in their gut right now. And I think that's kind of where I am at, at times, which is, you know, you we fear a disengagement, right? Yes, because yes. you know that kind of puts us back. Uh, as far as the like the state of the game and all that kind of stuff, I mean, I am talking mostly out of my ass because um, I do this all through feel. I haven't been participating. There's another thing I think that is is very different is that it is still very hard for much of the world to really actively um, participate in these events, mm-hmm. and um, you know, uh, it, it's 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 tough to have that like really intoxicating, exciting global meta that we had in Eighth Edition pre pandemic, really. Um, you know, it was just awesome. Even during the like darkest age of Space Marines, when it was like mostly what 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 scared me about it was that like I didn't want I didn't want how awesome it was to go away. I just wanted mm-hmm. it to get fixed so that like mm. the party could keep going. Yeah, and and a bit of that fire it just feels for litany for I guess the reasons I just sort of laid out it feels like that party is uh, a little tuckered out right now. Yeah, I'm, and I'm hoping the party is not over. So you, you both came at it in different ways. Uh, I love that Val came at it as kind of this we're in kind of a treading water, possibly stagnating um, position because just because of the, the uh, GW's inability to release codexes as quickly as possibly they want to, or maybe this was the plan all along. I doubt it. I really doubt it was. Um, 
and I actually have almost proof that it wasn't. At least up until this point, I know that the you know, things have been delayed by X amount of weeks and months. Well, they said as much. Yeah, exactly, no, they exactly. said as much. Like, I mean, they were yeah. averaging at least two codexes a month, and they released, I think there were at least two months where they released three hmm. in that entire year of, of the first year of 8th edition. Mm-hmm. So the pace was insane. Yeah, it was. Oh. Um, so... There's a lot to un- lot to unpack in in where we're at as well. So I do like what Pete said about the fact that uh, I'm sorry, and value. But I think you both said about the fact that the eighth edition issues were very kind of localized. If you want to look at it like that, Unari was propped up by Shining Spears. You know, if you broke and and, and the interactions between Doom and Jinx, etc. And if you just undid that knot, all of a sudden Unari's fine. Uh, even though they did like nerf soul, you know, soul burst ad nauseum when all they could have they could have really just hit those things instead. I think we I think I even had you guys on the show discussing. Stuff like that, uh, you know, a couple, uh, maybe even a year ago uh, now, about how GW goes about nerfing things and changing things when sometimes it's clear as day what the actual issues are. Um, but yeah, absolutely right. Like you know, the Castellan having a three plus invuln. They, they, I think they hit the Castellan appropriately, but they hit that they hit the three plus invuln and then they hit all the strats, or they hit the strats and then the three plus invuln. I can't remember because Aura Companions went up. Um, mm-hmm. The uh, I don't think Zombie Knight went up. I think I was always three one. But the one where you shot the missiles at the characters that went up as well. That went up to three. Mm-hmm. Um, and so all those things, you yeah. know, they they do different stuff. But there's none of that stuff happening in ninth edition. None of that stuff is happening. The the big and I, I said this off air. The biggest alteration I've seen to a book in the last kind of three or possibly six months was Balistari losing core, which actually hasn't had that much impact. It turns out I still see around about like somewhere between three and six Balistari in most Admech lists. Um, and yeah, it just doesn't seem to have like, been that impactful. I will say we have seen a significant decrease in admic win rate. They were almost they were just shy of a 70% un- until the FAQ. Yep. They've dropped down to about a 60. A lot of that is because is like you still see similar lists although Skatari veteran cohort is now becoming more popular um yep. and is more successful. Um but the other th- the, I think the big thing is is like the that slight nerf to the Balistari was enough to make raiders um like something like Drukari good into Admech again. Yeah, exa- exactly right. right. And so now um, that that has switched so that top tables have changed, right? They've, they've well, uh, flipped. On top of that, I mean, I mean, in circles that a lot of you, you and I flow with, uh, the discussion about what does a good, competent table of terrain in 9th edition look like really got galvanized by the injection of Admech. As soon as Admech are in, in the metal, people were like, well, a table needs to be like this for the game to exist if further. <laughs> so the same issue we had with Triple Repulses. Triple Repulsor Executioners from, from Iron Hands. We were like, yeah. wow, we actually just need X, X pieces of X terrain yeah. in order we to have a, a functional game. We wall in the middle of this table. Exactly, in, in exactly. In order to be able to play. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I saw, as, soon, as soon as I saw the Book of Rust come out, um, the one that gave the the um, the Sakarian cohort, whatever it is, the, yeah. sorry, Skatari cohort, I was like, that is the best way to play them. And it will be the best way to play them for the remainder of the existence of that book because I always thought a gun line is mitig- you can mitigate a gun line when you're just playing a super version of sisters like you just it's very hard it's very hard <laughs> very hard to stop <laughs> that um so in talking about the state of things um how what what has the community done like well, i mean in eight has gone past in six and seventh edition people picked up the ball people ran with it people changed things in order to make a go now, it seems like we're reluctant to pick that ball up again aren't we as a community right uh, but i'm not and I'm not going to suggest we're there yet, but what are your what are your gentlemen, gentlemen's thoughts about that? Yeah, well, yeah, we're. I think um, like the people that used to do that, you know, gained relationships with GW, and Eighth Edition in particular, when when you know GW seemed to really embrace the competitive community, and we were super excited and jumped right on that. Like, um, it's hard to back off it again, right? Mm. Um, because we don't want, and nobody wants to be the first one to say it. Like, we don't want to have. <laughs> We do, we don't want to like split the uh, split how the game is played, right? We don't want to we Legit. like I want to be able to go to the UK mm-hmm. and say that I'm playing the same game of 40k exactly right as I'm playing you know in at the Lord Marshall Conference in Midwest United States, right? Like the like we don't really want that big of a thing. We're already seeing these small FAQs go out. There were at one point before the Admec FAQ, like Lord Marshall was like, "We're just going to do a full, full blown. This is how you play 40k now." Yeah. When you're here, um, they backed off of it once we saw at least that that small set of nerfs. Hmm. Um, but we're also seeing it again. Um, if you if you follow Reddit or any of the other like subgroups, um, there's that call. There's calls again. Like someone needs to build a, an FAQ. Um, yeah. A lot of people are saying Goonhammer should do it because they already kind of have these rules, interaction situations that they're they're putting out in articles. Um, so you are seeing that call again. Not that option. It's just it's a uh, it scares some people because mm. like 
some turn TOs won't take it, right? They yeah. There's going to be people that'll say that this is um, you know GW is the only way because this is how the book is written, um, and who's to say that you're right? And the, or they'll just start making their own, and everybody will have different ones. It's very hard um, without a really big group coming out and making the change. Yeah. And so I don't I, even know if that would work. So. So uh, the f- number one thing I would say is that it's a terrible fucking job. Like it is a ter- especially uh, if you. Uh, uh. This is a community that, and I've used this term before, fetishizes officialdom. So, what mm-hmm. is the what is the thing that that is really meant? What is the vision here? You can't mess with the rules. It's really it's really tiresome the 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 level of discourse around this type of thing. Um, I think that if you were to see something um, like the way the old ITC used to work, which by the way, there was also the ETC fact. Uh, there was Adepticon. Nova kept its own fact. Uh, Community Atlanta comp, had its baby. Own fact. Uh, so, and so there's there's that. So there was there wasn't really world peace. There wasn't a, there. There's always interesting squabbling about who's got it right and who's yeah. actually playing 40k. And that's boring. And I I really railed against it. Um, uh, but beyond that, too, I think this is another thing that kind of puts things in an awkward position is that was a response to a game that was so broken that you literally couldn't play it. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. It was a and that's set. not that what was... we have right now. Mm, mm. Well, uh, I do love that you said that there were so many different ways to play and Pete said the same thing. But uh, we had a crazily fractured community, insanely fractured for what we were trying to build towards. And to go back to that now would just be like, it feel like returning to the dark ages when you've seen the future, you know? Be like, oh, you know, we, I've, I've seen world peace. I'd rather go back to World War One. You know, it just, it would feel really, really awkward. And I am, yeah, I'm I'm wholeheartedly against that. Where, um, where I could see it and where I would actually encourage it and support it, and, um, you know, Rob got mad at me for suggesting this, but I, I think, <laughs> frankly, um, the, the competitive 40k should be separate from match play, um, and I think it should probably be its own unique format mm-hmm. um, and with its own different uh, restrictions. Um, well, it, and I, I think I just I think that is something that would make the game better for everyone. Um, and um, yeah, well, my, and who in- who who determines what that format is? I think. Really, the only places it can come from, or as the Games Workshop said, this is our tournament format. It's a bit different than match play. Check it out. Or if, say, a very large tournament organizer were to say that we're going to run a, mm-hmm. you know, we're going to run, uh, you know, the, the 21st century Art Boys, you know, although I'm pretty sure Art Boys was the 2000s. But anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, we're going to run, we're going to run one for if you really want to compete, this is it. We're going to put up some prize money. Here's the format. That's the way you could drive it. Or yeah. maybe someone has a studio that is trying to attract an audience. And they want the most watchable format. Like That's how I think formats could evolve. Going so, forward. Insane. It, doesn't GW already do that? I mean, match play in... in so there's the match play handbook or whatever, the compendium, whatever it is. The, the gen, Sorry, the um the grand tournament packet book. And then there's match play in the rule book. And they're, they're yep. different things. There's different secondaries. Yep. There's different... All sorts. So you, so we just need them to pull the trigger on that and actually make that into its own living, breathing format, right? Yeah, because I mean, yes, you can say that there are two different things, but there aren't really two different things. Exactly right. Um, it's, the, the changes are... <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. The changes between there's, the two are minuscule. There's supposed to be, I think right now, like previously there was open, narrative, and mm. match play. Now there's crusade and match play. Um, and I, I still think that you know you, there should be a, a third tier to that for you know competitive tournament games. Pete, what do you think? I think he's right. I think they're like, it's just like, I don't know how, how to put it any differently. Like we were at a point, we were at a point this like this before where somebody did it and then another, and then somebody else was like, I don't like it. So I'm going to do it my way. And then it was, if you looked at the discourse, it was W like WTCs are idiots. They don't know what they're talking about. They're mm-hmm. playing the game wrong. ITC are dumb. They don't know what they're talking about. They're mm-hmm. playing the game wrong. Um, right. Like we were at that stage um, so like, I just, I don't know who would, other than GW, uh, could come out and do it and, and not start that again. Right. Uh, like that's the big deal is I don't know yeah. who could, who could step up, make it work, make it functional first off. And then also, you know, be able to beat off all the other competition <laughs> yeah, come out and say their own thing. Right? Oh, that phrasing. Ho, ho. I listened. I heard, as I was saying it, I was like, it's going to come along <laughs> and just, just say it. 
Just say. Oh, it came out wrong. <laughs> we're, well, not, uh, we're not 11 year olds here. And then I was like, no, we are. That's so what you're really are. Yeah. 100% are. <laughs> um, I think that's what I, I think the, the way to do it uh, would be that you don't present it as a format for everyone. Like you don't, you don't, you don't put it in an open scenario. You use it for, you use a, you demonstrate it as a format for an invitational or for some sort of a special event, and you use it to make the game better to watch and consume as a spectator. And so, then people can get into it and they say, "Hey, that looks great. I'll do that." Or they say, "Ew, that sucks. I hate you. Why do you hate Games Workshop? You're evil." And it yeah. doesn't work. And like, doesn't like that's also totally possible and cool. But um, yeah, I think I, I don't think it's something that anyone should <laughs> stick their necks out for uh, because so they'll be alive. Here's uh, I got so many thoughts on this. So it, people continue to come back to how uh, our G Dub has no incentives to have a balanced game. You know, the 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 power creep pushes sales and, you know, helps helps them financially. They are a business. We need to respect that. Uh, we don't need to like it, you know. That doesn't need to be something we buy into ourselves as customers, but that is what they, that is how they exist. Um, now, people say, oh, it's fundamental. And, and then when that, when the argument is said, well, that doesn't mean we should at least try to balance, you know. Maybe maybe just trying is good enough, which I believe it was in 8th edition. 8th edition, I think we never got to pure balance, but the work towards it made a kind of harmony in the community that everyone was a part of and everyone felt included in. and it engendered a lot of goodwill absolutely a huge amount of goodwill um which you know is on the decline or on the increase depending on how you see things um so but but when i look at how complicated and unwieldy this damn game is that i love you've got and this is just from a match play point of view you've got the basic rule book you have the tournament packet you have the missions you have the tables you play upon you have the faction balance and then you have the meta of your scene environment xyz there are so many just in those things that can be broken down into a minutia or a you know Googleplex of different options within each one, especially when they, you take into a fact of how many actual factions there are in this bloody thing. Like you talk about how much imbalance there's, there's been in StarCraft over the years, you know, with three three factions, and you think about the fact that we have what 16, 19, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It's just so unwieldy at this stage that achieving pure balance, true balance, I think is just what well, you'd need. You'd need a team of uh, like. You need a big damn team and a lot of money and full time staff, and then maybe, you know, maybe, and a willingness to do whatever it takes to achieve it. And the, you know what? The, the, yeah, the way Games Workshop has been dealing with that fact, which is that it's very, very hard to keep everything, uh, you know, on balance or at least mm. sort of level, is by just being relentless with yeah. releases. The meta yeah. never settles; it never yep. gets solved. Well, so a suggestion that I had, and this is what I'm coming around to more, but I, pff, they're never going, never going to do it, never going to happen. It's, it's seasonal. It's a seasonal game. It is, you know, people might gasp and hate the fact that it is so close related to games like Magic the Gathering, where at the start of an edition, e.g., when the you know easiest way ITC rolls over, here's everyone's index, and then here is the supplements that make your index spicy throughout the year. So G Dub still gets to, to do that revenue, but every year, every season, we hit a little bit of a soft reset. Um, you know, maybe the rule book, the core rule book, stays the same for you know three years, five years, nine years, whatever you want. Um, but, you know, every year we get a soft reset, all the factions start back to zero. Because I got to say, I don't know if this is how you guys saw the Psychic Awakening supplements, but it, it seemed to me when I was looking at them as they were coming out, these were them trying to patch fix things for the future. It's trying to make factions that were not going to function in the new edition make sense. Is that how you guys saw it? Yeah. Like it's, oh, I it's, hope it, it was. That yeah. was that seemed to be the goal. And it was kind of what um, you know, you'd heard like Reese say on signals a few times was, mm -hmm. And others like, hey, this these books are coming out as as like the hot fix um, coming into ninth that brings yep. these other factions up to the Space Marine level um, of you know Space Marines 2.0, which kind of got the full the full reboot and everybody kind of got soft hands. Mm. Um, and it it mostly worked, especially once you know Space Marines had about six nerfs. Um, basically, everybody <laughs> else felt like they were in in a pretty good spot at one point or another, um, and. Uh, yeah, the one thing I'll say, I think this game is eminently balanceable. I think we've seen it in the past. If you look at like Nova 2019 era, we were in a, a place where the game, was, uh, outside of was a, two or three really poor factions. It was a like, dream state. It was an absolute had, dream state. Like the oh. best factions in the game were Gene Stiller Colts and Imperial Knights, and they were sitting between a 53 and a 54% win rate. Your worst factions were, you know, 45 to 46. There were a, like, there were a couple really bad. Like, Games Workshop declared the game 
in good shape, if you recall, on the, uh, yes. on the fall FAQ. Yes. Yeah, and it was. It was most, it like, was. other than, like, Blood Angels and Space Wolves, like, you know, ter- secondary Space Marine factions, if you wanted to think of them that way. Like, the game, and Grey Knights, the game was was pretty good. Um, and then, you know, Marines, uh, we had Marines 2.0 come out, and that, like, just upended everything. Yeah. And they were, they, they were and are still so prevalent, Marines, that it's completely changed how you could balance the game, right? A 54% win rate was no longer even that good. Mm-hmm. Um, it was like, this faction's okay if they're at that. Um, has has Drakari and Admech done the same thing to not edition now? I think I think yes, but I think like we are still seeing the after effects of Marines. The Marine win rates and stuff aren't very good, but they still make up 25 to 30% oh, dude. of the meta, right? Every, so, every, every Thursday show I go through, they feel like uh, every single time I end a 50-player event, uh, running down the quick and dirty stats, there's 15 Marines in a 50-player yeah, There's 17 Marines. There's, there's so many you know, variations, right? And yeah. like two or three of them are are always still like on the cusp or are still good. Um, so that that will automatically skew how everything is. It used to be power armor was 6% of the meta. Um, yeah. Now it being 30, like if you're good at killing power armor and then you're also good at dealing with whatever else, like that, it's it skews literally everything. Um, and do you think uh, that do you think that played a part in how powerful that last that eighth edition Space Marine Codex was? Like the fact that it was probably the first edition of the game where you could actually say this is the age of the Xeno. Like Gene Steel Colts, Orcs, Eldari all held sway yeah. over the meta for huge swathes. Yep, yeah. it was it was a time when like uh, uh, like your your Imperial side was basically knights and guard. Knights um, and guard, exactly right. Yeah, because all the Marine factions, none none of them were good. Um, so they did need a, a lift, a facelift. They got too much of, they got like, they got their cheeks done, their butt done, they got the full <laughs> works, right? Um, yeah. and, and so now like, we're still feeling the after effects of that now. Um, mm. I, but, but I think the game is, is very balanceable. I, when I said at the beginning that if we tweaked Drukari and Admech, I think we'd be in a very good place. I'm not lying. I think we could get to a point where, our top tier factions are about a 55, 56% win rate, which is a tiny bit high, but way so, better than where we are. And then we would just have to get new codexes out for hmm. Tau, Guard, and like the the one or two others, right? So hmm. do you think so now we've gone, we've kind of talked about the the meta, the the faction meta. How do you guys feel about the rules? The core rules of ninth edition? What are your thoughts? Um, I've been asked that question before. I, I know that like when it was uh released i was really impressed by it Mm. um i think the core rules uh, seem at face level to be quite good the structure of the actual book is a great improvement there's a a lot to be liked i think um Mm. in 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 the ninth edition rules uh the missions maybe um have have put them in a bit of a corner well that was the next that was the next question because we're going we're going up the levels now um but yeah i uh, sorry, finish up. What you, the core the core book? You just you happy with it? You think it's pretty good? Yeah, I think that was I think it was really well established. I, I, mm. I, I think it's I think it's a great. It seemed like it was going to be a really good edition. I might, maybe I'm misspeaking, but it and and I think it definitely had that potential or has that potential still. Pete, yeah, I agree. I think the the fundamentals of this game are are good. I think it's mm. got a strong backbone. It's got it's got like a foundation that's there. Um, it just needs. A little facelift now. I think we've, like, it's hard because of the pandemic, right? So a lot of people yeah. will still say, well, there's still a bunch of people that haven't played a lot of games. But the people that have played a lot of games have played a lot of fucking games. Um, <laughs> Beep that, Seamus. But yeah. And, <laughs> and, and like, it's, it, and like I kind of said at the beginning, it, it feels time and time again like that it's solved. And that, you know, this is how you play this game. You see it in and how the play styles are evolving for people. And like, it's just, it's still super fun to play. Every time I manage to get a game in, whether it's on TTS or the like one or two have now been able to have live. Um, like I still enjoy myself by all means. I still enjoy myself. Um, but when you like, look at the tournament results, when you look at how secondaries are playing out, go, this go first win rate business, like when you just listen to top tier players talk about like list design, it's, it's all the same again. It's, it's all the same. Yeah. It's this it's, is the, these are the things I do to score points. And mm-hmm. if you really knuckle like knuckle down, 
there's like two ways to do it in the end. No matter what they say, in the end, it's like, oh, here's the two ways to to win this game. So yeah, yeah, and uh, I'm I'm just gonna put it out there. I actually really like the ninth edition core rules. I think they're some of the best rules the game has ever had. Um, and, and on face value, they're literally they're very similar to the eighth edition ones, but with a patch that makes terrain very interesting and a, a true kind of third player in every matchup which i love i adore mm-hmm. and i love i love that when we look back on this edition well, apart from saying that it's going to be tainted by you know a, a literal global pandemic i believe terrain it seems to be the thing that it's, it's discussed the most right maybe it's in your circles as well people are constantly going back and forward are uh, is uh, we don't have like itc versus wtc or any anymore we have terrain packets versus each other we yeah. have faqs we have ah oh, this terrain sets the way to go no this terrain sets the way to go no this terrain sets the way to go and it's very that that's i i love that we still have to have that kind of divide it's, yeah. it's just it's just like, like something that's built into competitive like the the competitive uh, echelon now it's I really hate hilarious it. I, I, love hate it, it as well, I hate it but i love why that it's still there because i find it hilarious but i hate that we, yeah I hate why that can't we just fun. do it guys why can't you yeah. just why can't we just have different ways like i love that the terrain has such an impact on the way we play mm-hmm. i just i and i want people to just be acceptant like we don't need articles saying why you know our terrain fixed a certain way the game is played um like we just don't need that just it's all good it's all Mm -hmm. good because it it dramatically affects how this game plays if you look at lgt terrain and what you need to do to to succeed there if you look at the gw terrain and what people change to make that work like it like there's it's all good the only yeah. thing that isn't good is a bowling ball. Just don't do that. Just don't Literally, do that. don't pull yeah. put a, pull up your Age of Sigmar <laughs> terrain for a 40k event, and you're probably okay. Like um, FLG, their first event back, they came in with some Eighth Edition terrain. Uh, there were some people that complained. They they didn't change much. All they did was like, okay, well here, do it this way instead, and it seemed to work out great with their like player optimized terrain situation. Um, <laughs> GW's got their thing, which completely changes the way you play the game. Um, yep. Like uh, LGT, WTC. Like, there's, th- it shouldn't be, that shouldn't be a competition. It should be like, these are just, uh, change the way you think when you play. Yep. And I like that. Yep. And yep. I want that to stay. But that literally is the ninth edition, who's got the oh, better yeah. FAQ. It literally yeah. is. It's, it's absolutely amazing to me. Or rules still, back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was amazing to me. We still managed to get that in the game. We, we're like, oh, yeah, everyone play the same, same missions, the same, you know, the same rulebook and everything. But rabble, 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 rabble. We're still a rabble. I love it. Um, uh, it's saying that I think that the game's quite stale, and I'm um, I'm going to pinpoint one th- one reason for that. Uh, it's pretty much just because of the missions. I think the missions, by dint of their design and the fact that we didn't see any significant changes in the GT packs from first year to to second year, has just meant the game just feels very same samey. Mm-hmm. And I'm say- I'm saying this as a commentator right now. I look at matchups. And I, I get very close to predicting final scores now. It's very simple, very simple. Um, unless people do crazy dramatic stuff to give to to ch- to flip, you know, tens to to fives and fifteens, the final score, the, your secondary score is so predictable now. It's almost might not as might not exist. Like we can always get rid of it. It it means so little for some factions, um, and that's, that's quite disheartening for me um, and for a lot of players out there. I've heard, especially like so. You said. Um, pretty much that they, when you get to competitive level events competitive lists you pretty much have to tick a couple of boxes in order to you know ex- to, in order to hang right mm-hmm. like one of those is having a oath of the moment heard the prey you know uh, whatever the machine one is for do you have a dumb auto 15 secondary yep. do you have it uh if you're if your answer is a no you don't get to hang in the top pile you don't get to exist at the top and best example i have that i said to pete death guard yeah I've been going through the Death Guard Codex. That thing is legit. It's got all the elements, every single one of the elements needed to make a good um, ninth edition codex. It's got movement shenanigans. It's got you know resurrecting. It's got um, damage reduction. It's got um, everything. There's f- fights last. You know uh, on demand. Great psychic <coughs> powers. Great relics and everything. It just doesn't have an auto fifteen secondary. Eg, it doesn't get to hang. And it's just such a barrier to entry entry if if we were spitballing a competitive format i think the first thing i would do is remove those things from the game yes Straight exactly yeah there's That's no right. reason for them literally no reason for them and, and they ex- remember so many of the the um competitive packs that used maelstrom cards vetoed out any yeah. faction specific maelstrom cards it's exactly yeah. the same thing we just we just refuse to pull the trigger I yeah. well it, it, it's not even being discussed okay like, yeah. and I, I find that Strange. Well, it, it's because it was, and people lost 
their minds. Yeah, like, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, like, uh, Hellstorm Mikey has made at least $35 in YouTube ad revenue from, <laughs> from three to four uh, videos on let's get rid of factions er, der, uh, faction secondaries. And, and I'm ignorant. people I'm got sick. livid about it. They were like, there's no way. Um, it, is a, it is a weird kind of camp. Um, As, but, but when we get to – so there's a lot of factions out right now that the way that their faction is built, a, fact, a good faction secondary is the only way they might be able to hang. I'm talking like knights. I'm talking custodes. I'm talking some other things. As we go deeper into this edition, custodes getting an auto 15 will let them hang. If they had that right now, they would be able to hang. I, I'm, I'm going to call it. And knights. Knights can't play the damn mission. <laughs> you know, If they had a good faction secondary, like they would, they could hang. I, I do think they're a lot better than people give them credit, however. But that's that's what I'm saying. Uh, it's, a, it's a double-edged sword. We'd be taking away from the top um, and uh, not giving anything to the bottom. That's what I'm saying. I just I, I would suspect that there would be a, a, a bigger net benefit than there would be uh, a negative. That's that's fair. That is fair. Um, um, but I don't know. We wouldn't know until we tried it. And again, mm. you you know we're and and it, so this is ultimately where where this conversation always goes is that when you make tweaks like that, you're you're just changing the way the meta is, right? Mm-hmm. And like so, you, I think. The thing that always frustrated me in the past when we'd have these arguments is, to me, like some of the changes that were being made and and things that were being done through FAQs were blatantly, obviously, improvements to the quality of life and and fun of the game. Um, so, like, if as long as it's like that kind of low hanging fruit, which I think this, for example, is, um, yeah, I think that there shouldn't be too much um, uh, bugaboo about it. Um, I don't know. Fair. Do you think? That these this rule set, these rules, these sorry, these missions rather, these missions can continue in the current format where they're at, where you it, you're very disincentivized to interact with your opponent. In fact, I've I've been, I mean, Peter came up with the original coinage of this, calling the bus stop list, the list that just stands at the bus stop, it gets a bunch of points and wins the game. E.g., essentially what Dark Angels were upon release. Mm-hmm. Um, and Necrons have essentially turned into that, especially another one that's gone down that road. Uh, I call it playing golf. I call it playing golf because the, the guy who plays the least amount of golf is the guy who, who played the best golf on the day. You know, you win a golf game by not playing much, by playing less than everybody else. And I feel like that's very much how people, the, how the best lists function. Like I've call, I must have I must have called and commentated like at least a dozen John Lennon games, and the guy doesn't do anything for three turns. There's literally nothing for three turns. He stops you getting a fifteen for three turns, and then he wins the game. Um, and he does it to almost to a T. Like he's got a tempo about him. Um, I played Dark Angels and like lost like two games and in, in like three events by minuscule amounts of points. And it's because and I didn't I barely left my left my deployment zone. I like mm-hmm. hey, I'm going to set up on this I'm going to set up on this objective. I'm going to set up on this objective and I'm going to take the amount of um, Talon Masters and Cyclone missile launches needed to kill you off one objective. And I'm going to win the game by twenty points. So something I noted at Charity Hammer. Um... I said it to Nick uh, at one point. Nick was having a game off stream um, against um, Stephen Trimble, who's an excellent custodies player from the Pacific Northwest. Um, Stephen had brought orcs, new orc codex, wanted to give it a, yep. a go. He had like a devastatingly powerful orc list, in my opinion, um, but it had a few too many Squig Hog Boys. And so you watch that game. And you'd think, man, Squig Hog Boys are super undercosted for what they do on paper, um, but they're so easy to be move blocked. Um, mm. So I was going by that game every you know, 15, 20 minutes as I was doing my rounds to talk to people and give updates for the stream. Um, and it was very clear that Nick was playing a completely different game than Steven. Mm. Steven was playing a game of engagement. He was yeah. doing everything he could to play a game. Mm-hmm. Nick was doing everything he could to not Right, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like he was just walking past Steven's models. He was like not charging anything. Nick's playing Drukari, but he's like, I can't. This is a one game where I can't trade, so I'm not going to. I'm just yep. gonna walk around the table and I'm gonna score points. I pick secondaries that'll let me do that. As long as I go first, I win. And he went it's, first, and then he just from, walked from, around the table. So it's a t- it's it's a two player game, 40k at the moment, where the guy who plays the best single player game is probably gonna win. The like, yeah, yeah. It's, this game, it's I think, players will always, always, always find the least interactive options because there's risk. Because yeah, yep. every, every, it every, eliminates every, risk. Yeah. 
Yeah. And and like you, this goes back to seventh edition with two plus three rollables and you know invisibility and 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 death stars. Um, you know, in in eighth edition, you know, Yanari was non interactive. It dominated the game. Um, you couldn't kill a Castellan, and it could kill all of your shit. Like there, there's, like that is just ultimately, if if it's a game that involves you know, um, you know, strategy and positioning and chance, you're gonna try and remove the thing that you can't always control. Yep. So like, and the reason why I'm saying this is from a design perspective, when they put in this stuff that you know guarantees a result. Um, you know, where, 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 like, like you say, you get an auto, you know, secondary or whatever, it will just immediately cause people to, at the very least, examine that stuff first. Like that's yeah. always the yeah. stuff that is looked at first and uh, is it good or not? Yeah. Um, and uh, my belief is that you're over incentivized in the current mission pack to, to play that way. Um, I think there always needs to be some incentive to, you know, mitigate risk. I don't want to see you only get only kill points, you know, et cetera. Sure. Um, sure. But at the same time, I just do think I just think you get too you get too much reward for not doing not doing much. Yeah, you know? and like, like and the we we see it also with the Sisters of Battle with the bodyguard rule, right? Like mm. I I wonder if Sisters of Battle could be competitive if the bodyguard rule didn't exist, because Ooh, that that's just because cool. that that's the thing that co- that like shuts down interactivity for your opponent unless they you know go through hoops. All of a sudden, I can't target all your characters, and you can just hide behind a wall. Um, mm. with Morvan Vall standing out in the open, just like saying, sucker, you got to charge me, and that's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. um, like, that's a, another level of, you know, shutting down interactivity that, um, you know, when taken to the next level is, like, how you win games. It's mm. it's by, like, forcing your opponent into making decisions um, while you don't have to make any. So, like, there's a lot of that in this yeah. game. So. Just spitballing it for a bit. What's the least amount of changes you could make to this mission pack to encourage people to make more decisions and make more risk? Uh, Peter, question. I it, like. I would say that there has to be like some big changes to the to the secondaries. Yeah. And then there's. Um. I would. I would really. I would probably get rid of two or three missions and just completely redo them to be hyper aggressive. Um. So because like the scouring, uh, scouring right is just like. <laughs> let's both stand here for a little while and we'll get fives on secondary for the whole exactly. game. Exactly. Right? Yep. Like, well, which is the which is the one where you start in the little box and none of the objectives are in your deployment zone? Oh, um... Everyone hates it. I love over, it. Overrun? No. I can't um, remember which one it is. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, We need more of those. We actually need more of those. Yep. People... And that, that one, I'm going to put it out there, should be in every player's pack. It should be in bold writing. You will have to play this one that makes you make moves. Um, because... <laughs> You know, that's what that's you know. As soon as you know that, all of a sudden, you know, the bus stop lists start falling off. They are, they have they come with some questions about whether they're just automatically good. Um, I do think uh, uh, the question. See, I'm I'm still iffy about the faction secondaries. Uh, firstly, though, I think Space Marine shouldn't be able to take two faction secondaries. Just let's yeah, just get that just out. Not exist. That's just dumb as all hell. It should not. It should never have been a thing. Um, like there should be a clause in the GT pack saying you can never have more than one non GT pack. So more than yeah. Yeah, less than two non-GT pack secondaries. That would fix it. Um, but yeah, I do think this isn't a thing that can just be fixed with just changing secondaries. Like the missions need to change. You just you're still just too incentivized. Like it's still it's just too much. Um, and so, <laughs> uh, well, the first thing they could do is they could make more of the uh, mission-specific secondaries actually do something. Yeah, because <laughs> there's the auto fifteens and then there's the zeros. There's yeah. very there's no gradient one. There's nothing in, the in between. There's minimize losses. Nothing. Minimize losses is pretty much mm. the only one, and that just turns into like another while we stand, we fight. Um, Ultimately, this is this is um, with these this type of a secondary system, and it's a bit unfortunate because I'm like at, at first blush, it seems like this is such an awesome way to do it, like mm. to ha- be able to you know tailor your missions um, to to your opponent or what have you, or to the strengths of your army. But I think in practice, what ultimately happens is that they get solved and. Um, they become all or nothing. And that's yeah. like, if we look at the experience of the ITC pack throughout 8th edition, and that's something I'm a little bit more familiar with. That is the, the experience of that is you go from very specific secondaries that are punishing in very particular scenarios to broader and broader and broader ones to the point where it just doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. I think that's where it kind of wound yeah. up at the end. And, they, and then these ones seem to start there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. That's, that's a great analogy. Um, 
In, so we might need to tell people what solved means. It's, it's a term that gets uh, gets thrown around a lot. Pete, are you able to inform listeners what that what the context well, of that great phrase example. is? Um, well, it's like when we say solved, we mean like 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 would say like a math equation or something like that. It comes to a point where um, if a, a meta is solved or if a game is solved, it's um, pe- like people are the majority, quote unquote, of like of people at competitive play are able to look at it. And they just know exactly what to do in all situations. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. they know how to win tic-tac-toe. a game. By, yeah, it's like tic tac toe. Tic tac toe is a soft game. Yeah. Hmm. So. And so uh, that comes with a couple of different levels when we're talking about competitive 40k. They're solving the mission, and they're solving the the matchups, and they're solving the the factions. And we talked about a solved faction, like you know. Um, Drakari is very close to being a solved faction, not in not so much as unit choices, but just in archetype in the the core and in what you're going to build around every time. Like every competitive list is the, the triple detachment, one of each comes with you know cult of strife, dark technomancers, and you know black heart or or um poison tongue essentially. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For the that's, most that's part, it. yeah. That's it. And to pick that up, put it in there, throw in whichever units look good to you. Always taking an archon, Drazar, three units of trueborn, and two succubuses, and then. You know, fill the rest with whatever you want. It's not going to be a bad list, um, and so that's that's essentially solved. That's as, that's pretty close to solved as, as an ninth edition gets. Um, is that a bad thing? Do you think it's a bad thing, or should the things like the FAQs and the erratas keep things from being too settled that they get solved? I think if things were done right, just like new codexes and stuff should shake things up enough. The problem is right now they're not because we have two factions that are just so good mm. um, that. That like that's what you have to like. There there aren't very many people right now looking at the Grey Knights Codex and saying I need to build to beat this. Mm-hmm. Right? It's very yep. like you don't see that. You see oh. it's all still like I still need to beat Raiders. I need to beat mm-hmm. Sakarans. Um, yep. So that's where where that solved comes in because it's like, what secondaries do I take? Can I take at least two secondaries where I don't have to interact with my opponent? Um, hopefully I can take three. Um, and then what's my third one if I can't, right? Like um, yeah. a, a really good way to look at this is is take a, if you haven't read it already, read Nick Nanavati's Art of War article on what he thinks a competitive orcs list is. Um, and But don't take it from the point of what is a good orcs list. Take it from the point of how do I write a competitive list. Competitive list, yeah. And you'll see, like, his immediate thing is, like, what two secondaries can I take that'll probably get me 15 points every game, um, at or at worst, 10? And then what's, like, can I make a list that gets me a third that's at, in that 10 to 15 as well? And then yeah. how do I... And then I'm going to fit units into that, trying hard to not engage because I don't trade up well enough, right? Yeah. Yep. So... So I'm, I'm going to put this one to Val. Do you th- so it's a bit obvious that G Dub thought through Eighth Edition allies were too prevalent. People were too over incentivized to water down their list and take you know triple triple detachments, triple factions. You mm-hmm. know, it, the super faction was your codex. Your codex it wasn't just you know how good is this codex? It's how good does it fit into my super faction? Well, well yeah, and also G- you were mostly motivated by the way uh, CP command points were yeah, yeah distributed. Yeah. Ninth Edition has gone in the opposite direction. G Dub looks like they're trying to make every single faction have the ability to play every single kind of traditional archetype, that being MSU Horde and uh, you know shooty fighty, etc. Um, mm-hmm. Do you think that's a mistake? Is that is that why we're having these factions that are just so damn good because they're so deep they can roll with whatever no. whatever punch we throw at them? No, absolutely not. No, I don't. I don't think. Like I'm sort of be sounding credulous by your question. No, I would say um, no. That's, I don't. I don't think that that's. That's the case. Uh, the, the super factions caused all kinds of consternation, um, and even all the way through as Eighth Edition went on, um, you know the the soup lists I think continued to lose power uh, right up until you got to Space Marines, which um, explicitly incentivized you to only use uh, one chapter. Although some players obviously did mix and match a bit. Um, I think you know if a book is overpowered. And it doesn't have good external balance, uh, i.e., how it reacts or, or interacts with other books. That's a, that is a, that is a, just an issue with rules writing that needs to be iterated, needs to be errated. Um, once once real world experience proves that maybe you uh, were a little heavy handed with some of the stuff you gave that army, and I think this happened. This happened in eighth editions, happened in previous editions, and it'll happen in future editions. The question yeah. is how responsive they are to it. Well, so I don't I don't feel like we've had it in so encased in a single book before. Like Admech, Admech can play. Name a style, name an archetype that Admech can't do. Like they can do everything. 
everything. They do mechanize, they can do gun line, they can do aggressive, defensive, horde, MSU, um, in the middle, whatever. They could just that book is so deep it can do everything. And in that in that in that extent, it seems very similar to the eighth edition Space Marine Codex. Because that the strength of that codex was that it could do everything, but it did everything because it had a bucket of supplements attached to it. The Admech book just has the Admech book. And the only thing that enables it to do the, you know, the ultra, I guess, ultra aggressive book is of course the supplement, the single supplement. Um, Pete, same question. Is this is this gonna be a problem? Because they can't obviously do this for every faction. Custodians can't play Horde. You know, what is that? You're going to have Horde Sisters of Silence. You know? No, I just assume Custodians will be bad. I, I, that, that's my assumption as well. <laughs> like, I actually, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't know. I, hope, I, would, I would hope they're amazing because they're my favorite in the whole entire world. Um, no, you <laughs> know what? Like, um, I think they can do it. I don't th- like, and I also think like we've seen with a couple of these newer books where like the incentive to go mono isn't that amazing. It like, like it, you can mix and it's not it's not going to be the end of the world um you know your best sisters lists are 100 percent sisters lists mm-hmm. but you can make an argument for not doing it right now and i yeah. think you could make a pretty decent imperium list that uses sisters um Absolutely. and it's so yeah like and i think if you're like there are a couple factions like knights like custodies where if you're not going to like fundamentally change the way they are you can just go ahead and do what like we kind of already see with custodies where they have a bunch of um strats and and abilities that work when you do soup like you can say this mm. is the soup faction like this is yeah. the guy you yep. want to have um because they bodyguard imperium units or what what have you right so um yeah, that's what I would do. I like that. I think that makes a lot of sense. But yeah, so for for my mind, I think I think it is a mistake by GW to make factions so deep. And I I do admit, like the things that make the things that actually put. Oh, that what I yes. believe. you're right. Yeah, I, I think I think um, I think Admech is too deep. I think Drakari is too deep. Sisters, not so much, but they they could be, um, it, like, especially if Drakari and Admech got crazy nerfs or hell orcs is one supplement away i think from s tier you know <laughs> um, but is it like if i could just interject but isn't that just a function of of like the depth of the model bench like like i mean like orcs for example should be just as like uh you know uh, dominant in all phases because they just have the range like they, they they have all the models and i think that's kind of where yeah. admec got well, to that's well that's what i believe gw is trying to do look at what they did with necrons they tried to flesh out the range Added a you know fast melee units, which was something they never had before outside the Canoptic uh, Wraiths. Added another you know backfield unit in the in the Doomstalkers, despite them being the worst thing that has ever existed. Um, but you know they're tr- they're trying to flesh out ranges. They're trying to give people reasons to have gigantic gigantic um, uh, collections. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is, is actually something we saw, I think, Pete, if you want to cast your mind back to 8th edition fantasy, there was such a big paradigm shift between 7th and 8th edition fantasy, where 8th, 7th edition was coined, it, 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 people called it Hero Hammer. You had um, yep. medium seventh, or minimum... 6th sixth, sixth and 7th were 100% Hero Hammer. Yeah, You had minimum to medium-sized units um, with just really well-crafted you know, characters in each unit, pretty much. And that, those, yeah. those units would prop up the whole thing. Guys and that could now, clear your entire front line so that exactly. they, you couldn't fight back, etc. Yep. Spot on. And we're seeing, uh, and the, the transition to 8th edition went from that to hordes, went literally to hordes. Um, I feel like we're almost getting that in this edition of the game. We're not. We're getting, you know, G-Dub is saying, oh, you had 15 Skatara infantry. Well, guess what? The best build now has 80, you know? Oh, uh, you had, you know, 20 witches and 20 Kabalites. Well, you know, here's 20 mans of all those things. Um, G-Dub wants us to fill out our collections. They want us to have big collections of every everything, which I think is good for the game. I love that. I love the idea of more faction specialists as well, which is what they're incentivizing as well. Mono faction armies, which I think is very exciting for the game because there was nothing is there was nothing like going into a team's event where your po- every single one of your opponent you know, is eight versus eight, and every single one of your opponent's armies had three factions in it. And you're just like, oh, how does that interact with that? And does those psychic powers actually work on that? And where's, these, where's the 12 FAQs I need to pull out to try and figure out how... You know, so, this works with this. And so I do like that. Go so I, I, I always, I always get a bit huffy on this one. And honestly, like, uh, the, uh, well, here's what I, what we do know. So this is, this is publicly stated information. The design process starts mm-hmm. with the model. So it doesn't start with narrative. Doesn't start with lore. Doesn't start yep. with what does this army need. It starts with what model do we want to make today. Mm. And from there, they then create some some stories for it. And then once there's a little bit of a narrative background for it, it goes to the rules team. And the rules team, in theory, designs that data slate off of 
what they see in that model and how they're inspired by that model. And that's that's how their sort of creative process flows as they've described it. And so therefore, in that creative process to me, I don't see where the conspiracy to sell models with rules that fits in necessarily because of where rules wind up. If, you know, like yeah. because rule I think I think I think they I think they make there might be I I just I just don't sense that that's the thing. The the way that they drive sales is by just relentlessly beating us shit. And <laughs> that's their sales model. <laughs> and by the way, relentlessly coming up with cool shit that we think is is like, man, I want that. Beast Snaggers? Yeah. What? I want the guys on the dinosaurs. Give me those guys on the dinosaurs. And we are frustrated because it's so good, but also there's all these like own goals that happen that we think, well, that could be fixed, and then it doesn't get fixed, and we just want to scream into a pillow. But that's, you know, like, I don't I don't see the conspiracy of, like, driving sales by, like, yeah. by writing rules to make them. Because there's yeah, as many new fair. models that have bad rules as there are. I, do, I don't you know think, I, mean? I don't think they, they do it. I think that it has happened on occasion. I think there have been times where someone's been like, hey, look at these rules, and someone's been like, shit, we're going to sell 100 <laughs> of that. <laughs> right like it, it's it has just, to have happened but it's not it like you but like val says it's not the it's not the running way we did things if that was the case everybody would be running three gladiators you wouldn't so, only yeah. see them in spain yeah right yeah. like that well, <laughs> I, I just i really I, sorry i know i just talked for a long time but i really want to want to hit this i think that an example where this was different is when p pointed out that in the beginning of eighth edition six percent of the meta was was power armor when 50 or 60 percent of your model range is power armor that is yeah. a problem dude well right? that's it well that's the example I, I put together about 20 minutes ago half an hour ago when i said did you know, obviously had incentives to make marines good at the by the end of eighth edition yeah they didn't need to make them like no like like uh but, movie so, marines but like but, they're, they're, perhaps they noticed that people weren't buying marines because they really suck but mm -hmm. so in val in the example you gave you it, it seemed like a very siloed process and so but so you can't tell me that there's somebody uh, sitting above that whole process who goes in and says, well, you we made all these Gorkonauts and Morkonauts, and somewhere in the process from conception to release, um, no one wanted to buy them. You know, uh, the, the end result was we created the thing, went through all the process, invested all this money and time and development, and then the end result didn't get us the result we wanted. Where in this process did it fall down? You know? And of course, it's taken them like, you know, 10 years to make that unit viable. But, you know, bad example. <laughs> but, you know, they, they did. They did. They have tried. You know, right, the buggies is a great example. You know, the squeak yeah. buggy. Did the, you know, <laughs> what a joke. What a joke it was. What a terrifying thing it is now. Um, you, you can't tell me there's nobody uh, overseeing the whole process that goes, okay, you know, um, the... That might be the rules team reacting to people saying, why does my squig buggy suck so bad? And well, I think also, like, the, uh, and that there's a, a, a potentially non cynical explanation for Space Marines, which is more than half of my <laughs> player base exactly. is complaining that the Space Marines are getting their just absolutely wrecked every time that they take the table. Totally. So sad. perhaps they overcorrected to that. And it's yeah. not just a, oh, we're going to get these, gonna get these <laughs> suckers to pop a bunch of Space Marines. We're going to get yeah. these Maybe things moving again. But mind Holy you, like, crap, everyone wants Space Marines to be good. Let's give them the best Space Marine Codex ever, which is, by the way, how they marketed it. And boy, were they, they right. They were absolutely correct. They were absolutely correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, gentlemen, uh, we, might, we might leave it off here. We could probably keep going. We are going to keep going over in part two. But I do not want to exhaust uh, all our juicy, juicy topics. And we have a huge swathe of them um, from our listeners and our patrons. A swathe, if you will. A, yeah, a swathe. It's a, like, <laughs> like Swayze, like Patrick Swayze. Mm. Uh, um, a Swayze of questions are waiting us. So, gentlemen, thank you very much for your discussions. Uh, I feel like we did go in circles at some points, but I feel like we hit all the major talking points in some manner, which I'm pretty happy with. But I feel very complete about our journey. Ooh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you guys got anything you want to mention? Anything you want to plug? Anything we desperately missed? Uh, uh, no, I, although Rob did ask us what some one of our, our, our least favorite takes are, and that triggered me. So that was one of my least favorite takes. Mm -hmm. What was? Uh, Which was? Just, <laughs> just the rules. The rules to model sales. Rules to model sales. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think the hobby side is too strong for that to be an argument. But anyway, um, yeah. I, I uh -huh. guess the only th I'd leave it at this for the people that aren't going to pay to see the second half. I think the game's okay. I like yeah. it for all the negative. There's a good. There's a good amount of positive, and I think we're on the cusp. If someone would listen, or if someone would pick up the the bootstraps or whatever, mm. whatever you want to say. <laughs> The, for it to be good, like really good again. Uh, legit. I think if G-Dub was as active as they were in 8th edition right now, the game would be 
pretty p- magnificent. It'd be, it w- I wouldn't say it's going to be balanced. I wouldn't say it's going to be perfect, but it would be pretty damn good. Like mm-hmm. pretty damn good. I don't think we're um, far off. Yeah, I don't think we're far off. But if we go much longer without much intervention, we then I'll be, be super bummed. We're super bummed. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's not doom and gloom, guys. Hopefully, if you enjoyed this, hopefully I haven't got you guys down. Hopefully, this has been some interesting talking points. Hell, you know, tee up your mates over the virtual, you know, uh, water cooler and discuss some of this stuff yourselves and let us know what you guys, what insights you guys glean or come up with. Always interested to hear people's thoughts. Um, Val, Peter, love you both. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, love mwah. you too, man. Mwah. Cue up that bye-bye, Val. Hit it. That's not my shtick. I know, but I'm trying to... Uh, there it is. Thank you for listening to Art of War Down Under, a content review podcast for Warhammer 40K, hosted by Adam Camilleri, produced by Seamus Ronan. Enjoyed the show? Want your lists reviewed and the content you heard put into practice? Sign up to our Patreon and connect with us online or on Facebook. Just search for Art of War Down Under, signing out from tomorrow.